Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Now, Hamza Yousaf gave a speech last night. It was a speech on the economy. Seems rather odd that a man who's overseeing a possible £2 billion black hole on the books is talking about how well he can run an economy. And we did a video on this yesterday. Uh, but um, that was just on the, sort of the, on, the, on the laughable side of him running this or doing this speech. Today, we're going to have a look at the speech he gave because uh, a, a somewhat an expert in the field, as you may say, has taken it apart piecemeal. Uh, a rather successful businessman has looked at it and is basically just laughing his head off. It's quite clear Hamza Yousaf has not got an absolute Scooby-Doo when it comes to finances or the economy. And yet he sits there and thinks that he can pontificate on such matters with some kind of authority. And we all know he's got no authority. Not just no authority over the economy or anything, but literally no authority within his party anymore. Oh you know, dear, his time is coming to an end. And so the more he makes these sort of grandiose speeches, the more we can laugh at him. Because he is now just a figure of ridicule. And so let's ridicule him. Here goes. Now, before we get into this, I will say that a couple of people this morning have already come to me and said that uh, YouTube has bounced them off being subscribed. So it was sort of unsubscribed them automatically against their wishes and against their knowledge. Uh, and some of them have only just found it sort of by accident. So do please check that you are still subscribed if you're a subscriber. And if you're yet to subscribe, now's an excellent time to do so. Uh, we're going to try and uh, push for a big number that's coming up shortly, hopefully towards the end of February, perhaps. But every subscription we get makes the channel bigger and wider. and We can get our message out. YouTube does not like political channels for some reason, tries to push them down. So do please subscribe if you are yet to do so. And please check if you are. Anyway, Hamza Yousaf's laughable economic plans are torn apart by a top Scots businessman and former government advisor. So this is someone who was close to the government, is now sitting there and looking from the outside in and saying these people are basically a bunch of donkeys. Not a surprise to most people, I know, but uh, it won't be pleasant for them to read. Uh, the First Minister is, is saying here, set to give the major speech. He gave it last night. This is one of those hangovers from yesterday. But he gave the speech last night. But um, what's very weird is that the whole contents of the speech were given to the press early. It's almost as though he wanted the press to have this rather than just turn up. Perhaps he thought not many people would. Uh, and so this was given to him, given to the press, I think it was on Saturday. And they were told, oh, don't release anything as an embargo uh, until Sunday. Uh, in which they, they could all talk about it. But people were given the, the whole contents of the speech. So none of it came as a surprise, which is why we did the ridiculing of the speech yesterday. Uh, but now we've got uh, this, this top businessman and he is going to basically eviscerate it because it's just worthy of that. You know, it's just a failure. That man is a failure and everything he does is a failure. And now he's trying to give these speeches to try and build himself up, to show himself as some powerhouse of economic credence. And he is no such thing. He's an idiot. Anyway, Hamza Yousaf's economic strategy and tax plans have been torn apart by one of Scotland's top businessmen, who also served as an advisor for the Scottish Government. Andrew Murphy hit out at the First Minister for going back on his promises to the businesses that he would reset the SNP executive's relationship with them. He's done, of course, no such thing. He's made life worse. And there's not a, a sector in business in Scotland that hasn't been interfered with, harmed, destroyed. Uh, and it's continuing. Long-term lets, short-term lets, uh, tourism, construction. I mean, construction. We saw a, a house builder yesterday going into receivership. And it's not going to be the last one. Um, the, the drinks industry, advertising, petrochemicals, Grangemouth is going. There's not one area of Scottish life where the SNP haven't interfered in business life and made things worse. Anyway, months after making this foul, he's already infuriated them through his refusal to pass along business rates relief. Money handed over to them already from Westminster, which they then spent on other things rather than handing it over. Uh, and he's made on the hoof tax policies that were sneaked through fine print in his first budget. Also standing at conference and announcing council tax freezes 
without budgeting it, without working out the cost, and without, you know, telling anyone. A potential new public health levy on shops was included in the documents, but not announced publicly. Sneak through, underhanded, backhanded. Had to be put through on the QT, because if they'd have said out loud, we're going to be taxing shoppers every time you go shopping, that wouldn't have been very popular. But that is effectively what's going to happen. Now, they're calling it a supermarket tax, but the supermarkets are going to pay this tax, which ultimately means they're going to put the prices up. So you're going to pay this tax. Mr Murphy is the former chief operating officer at John Lewis and head of the toy retailer, the Entertainment Group, and also served as a co-chairman of the government's retail industry leadership group before stepping down after a year. He launched a scathing attack on the Nationalist administration where he labelled their industrial strategy a joke. It's not that funny when people are being lumped onto the dole um, and it, it and it's not going to end just with one or two companies. There's going to be thousands upon thousands of people losing their jobs as a direct result of SNP economic policy. He described the announcement of the levy, which he could see large, uh, sorry, which could see large shops taxed on alcohol and tobacco they sell as beyond depressing due to the way it was only discovered through the small print. He added it's exactly this sort of loose cannon stealth mode unpredictable policy on the hoof nonsense that makes the Scottish government impossible to constructively support or advise. Writing on LinkedIn, he accused the government of hypocrisy. <laughs> Is anyone surprised? Hypoc hypocritical cant coming from the SNP. Say one thing, do another, look at me as I'm being virtuous, meanwhile stabbing businesses in the back. Tell you, ain't so. Uh, and anyway, this was as Mr Yousaf announced plans to work closer with businesses, but not acting this way. He said the SNP minister talked the language of collaboration only to have blatantly contradicted their words through their actions. And almost immediately. They can say... The trouble is, they want to look good and they want the press releases and they go, oh, come along, we're going to say this. And look, I look, I look good in the press today. And then watch in horror as every business in Scotland crashes and burns because although that's what they say, that's not what they do. Uh, in a scathing reference to the First Minister's pledge, he added, New Deal, uh, he says, same old, he, same old deal, he said, industrial strategy, I can't type for laughing. His post was in response to David Lonsdale, the director of the Scottish Retail Consortium, who posted on LinkedIn column, uh, he wrote, which attacked Shona Robertson's shock plan for new arbitrary business rate surtax on food retailing. In other words, another tax on supermarkets. If you sell food, we're putting a tax on your business. He said the SRC has played a constructive role in the Scottish Government's New Deal for Business Group. However, the manner with which we learn of this possible new tax falls well short of the no surprises element of the New Deal, let alone promises to involve those affected. Those affected are everyone in Scotland who eats. Literally, if you are the sort of person who likes to eat, then you are affected by this tax because the tax will go onto the supermarkets. They're not saying we're taxing food. They're saying we're taxing the supermarkets. But the supermarkets will have to put the costs up to meet this tax burden. In response, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Murphy praised the necessarily restrained piece, but attacked what is another entirely unheralded policy announcement. He said it's beyond depressing that despite multiple convening bodies in place, Scottish retail leaders have yet to find out about this by delving into the small print of the budget. Repeatedly, they talk the language of collaboration, of strategy and of consultation. But then, before you can say, please, Minister, forgive my rampant scepticism based on the evidence of your government's past performance, they've up and blatantly contradicted their own words through their actions. Mr Murphy's in intervention will dampen the spirits of the Scottish Government ahead of a major speech by USAF last night, where he will insist that the SNP will boost Scotland's economy, but only with independence, which he claims is needed to improve Scotland's living standards and sluggish economic growth. Does anyone believe that that man is going to improve Scotland by having independence? Does anyone believe that the high taxation that will inevitably follow an independence movement is going to boost the Scottish economy? Does anyone believe 
anything that that liar says. No, didn't think so. Coming up. The problem with the SNP is everyone always automatically assumes that whatever is said is a lie. And that's because everything they say is always a lie. You can believe nothing. They told you it was raining. You, you know, you'd have to put your head out the window to check and you'd see the blazing sun. It is that bad with them. And so when they sit there and talk their game, oh, we're doing this, we're doing that. You know, it's not. It's all lies. It has to be lies because they can't, dead, mustn't ever tell the truth. The truth is so damaging to them. And there's bullshit they come up about. Oh, if we had independence, everyone would be better off. Everyone knows. Surely even the SNP supporters, stupid as they are, must know that an independent Scotland run by the SNP would crash and burn within days, if not weeks. But it would go and everyone would be poverty stricken. First of all, the taxes would go through the roof. And secondly, no one would have a job because every single business would burn to the ground. Anyway, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for watching. Do please pay attention. I've got many more to come today. Can you please hit the subscribe button? We are getting on so well now and I'd just like to boost that up to get the, the word out and we need to make sure everybody knows exactly what's going on. Till next time, stay safe, stay well and remember, they're liars. We provide the truth. Bye.